We are not at Oak Haven today. We are on a field trip because I wanted to talk about stilt grass. Uh, we've had a lot of videos on stilt grass because it's a, it's a serious concern of ours and it's also a concern of anyone who at, uh, deals with natural areas. I'll, I'll put a, a, a range map of where you find stilt grass. Um, stilt grass was introduced into the United States in the early 1900s probably. Um, into Tennessee and if you look at the range map you'll see that um, that's kind of like ground zero and it is spread out from there and to be honest I think that the definition of the range is less about um, you know environmental factors and more about the fact that it's spreading out from there so it's uh, it's something that everyone on those outskirts uh, can look forward to um, dealing with sometime so it's an introduced uh, non-native weed that is very aggressive and that's what we want to talk about a little bit so one of the reasons why we're here is that we wanted to uh, just demonstrate what happens if you don't manage your stilt grass. And if you look behind me here, this is just a stilt grass jungle. We are at a local nature center um, that is, you know, there's only so much they can do to manage it when it becomes like this. Um, as far as I can see, there is stilt grass tumbling over every bit of vegetation here and it's choking out other things so um, this is the problem this is what we want to avoid there's two ways to, to solve this problem one is once you've got it putting a massive amount of energy into getting rid of it the other is to recognize it so that on your property or in your backyard or in your parks um, you see it and you recognize it for what it is and you hit it when it's small rather than waiting until it gets to the point where it's you know practically um, unmanageable so we wanted to talk a little bit about what Japanese stilt grass is and what it looks like so that you can recognize it Japanese stilt grass it's an it's an annual grass it's a non-native annual grass from Asia so it pulls relatively easy it has these kind of straw colored roots at the bottom and then the the, the leaves themselves are oval and have this shiny stripe up down the middle of it. That's the easiest way to, to recognize it. Uh, you can see this is in bloom now, so we are in what it must be about the 29th or so of um, September. Um, so this is in bloom, it's setting seed, it's dropping seed as an annual. That's the, what we're worried about. The, the, this, this plant is going to die this winter, uh, but any seeds will sprout up next year. So we want to be able to recognize this. Um, and take care of it when it's a, a small infestation. So we walked over to this area because I wanted to show kind of one of the saving graces of, of stilt grass is that it doesn't have a wind-blown seed. It's got a pretty heavy seed that drops down um, right by the plant. So you end up with a huge monoculture of Japanese stilt grass, which is awful. But if you look over here, you know, a few feet away, you don't find any. So it, it, it doesn't like spread like crazy. You can imagine if this had a little tufts of, of, uh, of fluff on each seed, like a dandelion, then you would look over this woods and this woods would be completely full. As it is, there's huge areas where it's bare and then there's huge areas where it is, has this Japanese stilt grass. So our goal is to, to recognize it and to keep these areas contained when we can. So let's talk about timing a little bit, when you need to deal with stilt grass. So stilt grass um, comes up, it doesn't come up early in the spring, it comes up later in the summer, and it seems like it comes up throughout the summer, it will sprout up. So what we do is we spray it, we spray it with an herbicide, a claim extra, which is a grass specific herbicide, so it will kill the Japanese stilt grass, but the, um, the, the tulip poplar here and some of the other forbs, it won't hurt that. Um, so that's generally a good thing for when we're working on the forest floor. We also have a video on using um, a claim extra on lawns because it doesn't um, kill turf grass either. So it can kill Japanese uh, and stilt grass in turf. Uh, so that's what we use. A lot of people will use uh, glyphosate. Um, they'll use a diluted version of glyphosate, like half a percent. That's much more dilute than we normally use for woodland management, uh, where we normally would use a 2% for um, foliar treatment on leaves. People will use a half a percent because it doesn't necessarily kill the herbs is the theory um, the the um, perennial herbs as much as it does things like this annual grass now we have a whole nother video on uh, treating that with um, glyphosate and some other suggestions that you can look at that um, uh, we really feel like the, the half percent glyphosate really knocked out a lot of the the native uh, 
plant community too, so that seems a little strong to me. But what we use is a claim extra. We'll talk about that later. Um, we do it in the, the probably July, August or so. Um, so now we're into September. Uh, it Once it starts setting seed, it's dropping seed and it's really not worth the effort. You can kill it and you can kill off this upper plant, but then the seeds are going to drop to the ground and they're going to germinate and you haven't done anything and you've thrown a lot of chemicals out. When it blooms, it sends out a, a bloom up at the top. This will open up and uh, will will open up in flower. So we have that flower there. It also, Japanese stiltgrass, has these what's called cleistogamous flowers, which means that in the leaf axils, it will have other flowering stalks that you never see. They never actually open up. You, you pull back the leaf stalk and it will show you flowers that never opened. They just, they're, they're self-fertile and uh, they produce seeds, even though you never see the, the flowering stalk. So you can't just come through and, and like mow down the top part of it because you'll have these seeds that you didn't recognize were there all along the stem. So, you know, Julie's mentioning that one of the ways that's easy to recognize this, or one of the, the characteristics that makes it easier to recognize, is the fact that it's, it's uh, branched. You can look at this, it grows up, and then you've got a branch going out here, and a branch going out here, and a branch going out there. And, you know, that's where the, the name stilt grass comes from, because this will come out, and then it will send down a, a root over here, and it looks like um, stilt roots. Um, but it looks unique. It, it, it's not like a lot of other grasses. When it's small, I think it tends to look almost like a ladder because the, the the leaves don't follow the stem up. They kind of go off, not straight across like a ladder. They do go up at an angle, um, but still kind of unique. So we have other videos that go into more detail. What I was most interested in portraying for this video was just the havoc that this can cause if we leave it in our, our landscape and why you should learn it. You know, grasses are intimidating for some people that they look at them and say, how am I ever going to learn that? It looks like every other grass. This looks pretty unique. You know, it's got this wider oval stem. There are other things that look like that. It's got this very evident, um, shiny line through the middle of it. And once you start looking for it, it gets pretty obvious and it grows in such um, dense stands. So learn to recognize it and then learn to do something about it because we can't let our ecosystems be overrun with these non-native invasives that are just going to choke out our native plants. There won't be plants to uh, to feed the insects, there won't be insects to feed the birds, uh, it just the whole system falls apart. So um, my, my goal here is to instill fear in you that this is what the future looks like if we don't learn what Japanese stilt grass looks like and learn how to take care of it. So thanks for coming along. If you know of people that, that would be interested in this, please share the video. Um, anybody who's out in the woods should know what this looks like so that they can uh, do, take action against it. Thanks a lot.